So I'm not sure exactly what the moral of the story on this one's going to be. <laughs> but I just thought, sometimes you just need to know stuff and you need to hear stories from Scripture that maybe you aren't aware of. Maybe you haven't heard in a long time. Maybe you've never heard it before. Um, but today I want to talk about difficult children. <laughs> Anybody have any of those? <laughs> we don't have any difficult children in our family. No, we're good. We're good. The imaginary. The imaginary. <laughs> so I think I better pray before I start. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I am fascinated by different people in scripture. People I've, you know, maybe we kind of cruised over them when we were in Sunday school, but we've never really done any in-depth <coughs> studies of them or stories about them. So, um, y'all remember David, right? King David? Okay, just check to make sure y'all remember. Um, David was called to be a man after God's own heart, but he messed up a lot. He messed up a whole lot. Um, and a lot of it filtered down to his children. So those of you that are parents, how do you know you've done a good job? Sorry. They're still breathing. Somebody else said they've left home and they haven't come back. They haven't been to jail or juvie. They're not on your payroll. They're not on your payroll anymore. Their children are giving them trouble. Their children are giving them trouble. You remember that 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 oath you spoke over your children? I hope one day you had a child just like you. My daughter has a mini me. It's wonderful. <laughs> I just sit there and laugh. Well, I, as you remember, I'm one of eight kids. And my mom held us to a very, very high standard. Um, and she had very high expectations of us. And I remember one day she looked at us across the kitchen table. We were all there. And she said, well, nobody's in jail. I must have done OK. <laughs> You know, family can be the best, and sometimes it can be the worst things in our lives, depending on what our life experiences are. And so many times those happen based on how equipped our parents are. And sometimes if you don't have a good role model growing up, it's going to be really hard on you to be that good role model for your family and for your ch children. Because, you know, home should be a place of safety and not a place of fear. But for many people, unfortunately, it's not a good or a happy place. David was a man after God's own heart, and yet he made decisions that to this day we look at and we question. There's no question that he was an awesome poet, he was a musician, he was a great king who is still honored today, and boy, did he mess up a lot. You remember the story, one, uh, probably the most famous story that we all know about David, is Dave, uh, other than David and Goliath, right? Is David and Bathsheba. He took it upon himself to acquire a married woman while, his, while her husband was at war. And then when the husband wouldn't collude with him to sleep with his wife because David had gotten her pregnant, he had him killed. Wow, a man after God's own heart right there. <laughs> I mean, this, y'all, if you just want some thrilling reading, just open your Bibles to 2 Samuel and start at verse 1, chapter 1. All this is in here. I'm not making this up, not even a little bit. 
And one of the things that I think that is amazing about that is there are so many things in this world where they want to sugarcoat all the details. They want to gloss over. And scripture tells us about the ugly warts and how in spite of them, God can still use us. Now that should have got an amen. amen. There you go. I'm going to have to ask for it. It's going to be a long sermon. It really is a short one. But remember, <laughs> you get agents for the most unlikely states. <laughs> but you remember in David's sin with Bathsheba, he was called out, wasn't he? Nathan the prophet looked at him and he said, <clears throat> he wouldn't let, you know, he was, he was his advisor. He was David's advisor so that he could be a good and just ruler. And he went and he told that story about the lamb and the, the rich man and the poor man and how the rich man took the poor man's lamb. Y'all remember I told you about that probably a couple weeks ago. And David said what that man did was horrible. And Nathan looked at him and pointed his bony finger, because it had to be bony, <laughs> and said, you are the man and made David confront his own sin. Made him responsible for the choices he had made. That's exactly what he did. And then he delivered this message that David would always, his family would always suffer under the sword. His family would always live under the results of his actions. And you may remember the rest of the story that the first child, the one that uh, he, the first child that Bathsheba and he had together died shortly, just seven days after it was born. The next child that he had was, was Solomon. And we know that Solomon followed David to become a wonderful and wise ruler. Well, David had lots of other kids because David had lots of other wives, lots of other concubines. Now, it wasn't just because they were all about polygamy, all right? In those days, so many times, your marriages were part of how you, uh, you grew your empire. They were, it was a political statement. So you would take on wives, and then there would be, because now your family, you're not supposed to fight each other, right? Somebody forgot to tell David's children that. His second born son was Khalid, but we never hear another word about him, just that he was there. And then we hear a story about Absalom and Amnon, Amnon who raped his sis Absalom's sister Tamar. Y'all remember that story? It's a horrific story. They tried to do everything to say, don't do this thing, Amnon, don't do it. My father will give you my hand in marriage, but he let lust take over, and he made a horrible decision. And he raped his half-sister. And then when it was brought to David's attention, according to Absalom, it, David wasn't stern enough. He wasn't strict enough about what happened. David was angry, but Absalom never saw David really enforce the kind of penalty that he thought should be there. And so he did something. He took matters into his own hands, and guess what Absalom did? He killed his brother. He ran away after he did that for many years, and we talked about that last week, and I'm not going to try and say that name again. <laughs> But he ran away for many years. And then later, when he came back, he decided he was going to try and take over the throne. And he tried to take over. He, he formed an uprising against David and, and brought folks around him. And, and David left Jerusalem. Remember, that was part of the story. And then Absalom, who was said to be beautiful, one of the most handsome men ever, got his hair caught in a tree limb while he was riding on his donkey. This is 
This is what says here, okay? Was hanging by his hair and was killed by some of the troops from David's army. And David didn't want him to be killed. Even though he was opposing his father, David did not want, he gave express orders, don't kill my son. But sometimes loyalty moves a little bit more than <coughs> listening. And so the soldiers who killed Absalom thought they were doing what it was that David needed to have done, not necessarily what he wanted to have done. Then later, another, another set of children, David's son, Adonijah, that's not right, Adonijah, that's close enough. <laughs> the mom was displeased that David had anointed Solomon to be his successor since all the other brothers up to that point were dead. Well, the mom didn't like that. And the younger brother, the younger brother of Adonijah killed his older brother because he was loyal to David. Can you tell this family's a mess? You know, I, you know, when we look at David and we look at even our own families, people learn their actions from what they observe. That's how we learn. We, you know, our parents can send us to school and, and we can learn all the right things and we can know all the rules, but how do we react is a, is a complete observation so much of what we have experienced in our lives. Because I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to control my reactions when I'm upset. Anybody else got that t-shirt? <laughs> Even though my brain says don't do it, my body wants to go. But when we see people who live their lives, even through difficult times, and they choose to do the right thing, even though it's hard, they learn that. Our children learn that from us. Our grandchildren learn that from us. One of the things I want to say first is I am so glad, and I hope you are, that we don't live in biblical times. <laughs> where the way you knew who was going to be on top was who killed who. Because you were either on top or you were on the bottom. Kind of like that, uh, that joke about being the lead dog and not the lead dog. And the, yeah, scenery never changes. Yeah. <laughs> because in, in, as we hear in so many of these stories, Israel was either on top or they were subjugated. We live in a time when we have the right to choose. We live in a time where we don't have to deal with uh, children killing children to get succession to the throne, thankfully. But we live in a time that's hard, would you say? I think one of the worst, one of the worst and the best things that have happened to us is the access to the internet. I think it's one of the best Man, I can get on Amazon. I could get on Amazon right now in the middle of a sermon and order something that I want and have it delivered. I'm not going to do it, but I could. I mean, the access is amazing, but at the same time, in all of that interconnectivity, we are exposed to so much. And our children are exposed to so much that is not good and not healthy and not wholesome. As one of eight kids, I, I really credit my parents for how I turned out. And, you know, was my life perfect? Were they perfect? Was their relationship perfect? I can tell you a great big fat no. They had some really hard times in their lives. And I, I mean, to even to raise all of us. 
There were mistakes that were made throughout our lives growing up, but you know, the one thing I could always count on in the midst of those mistakes is that there was honesty. If my parents messed up, they may not like it, but they would admit it. And if I messed up, guess who got held to that standard too? I did. So I knew where I stood in the midst of that relationship. I knew I could count on what to expect because my mother didn't talk about her faith. She really didn't. She lived it. And my father for many years was a very faithful church going Christian until by the time I came along pain and rejection had dealt him a hand to where alcoholism took over so much of his life. And even in that lesson that was difficult, I learned some things. I learned how, how pain can transform somebody from somebody who is loving and giving to a person who is really struggling just to make it through another day. Sometimes the lessons we learn aren't what we want to be, but sometimes what we don't want to be. Because if we take those lessons and we commit them to our lives, they can be transformative. You know, I don't know about you, but as a parent of adult children, any of y'all parents of adult children? <laughs> Some of you have got almost adult children. I spend a lot of my time wondering, did I do well? Did I make the right decisions on their behalf? Did I live faithfully? Because just as we see here in the scripture, your decisions affect the lives of others who are entrusted to your care. Did I do a good job living out my faith? So, did I make some mistakes? Uh, yeah, I made mistakes. They reminded them of me of them constantly. But we laugh about it. Did their dad make mistakes? Yes, he did. But how we admit it and handle them is the thing that makes the difference and helps them build character as well as myself. You see, when we learn to live an honest and open life, we don't have to worry about secrets that, need, that we're trying to hide. We don't have to worry about what everybody thinks because if we are guided by God, if we have Christ in our life to, to, to direct us and lead us, we're going to do our best. And yes, sometimes we're going to get it wrong, but the thing is, we are giving it our best. Now, the fun thing is being a grandparent, you get a do-over. <laughs> right? You're going to enjoy this so much. <laughs> Dwayne Brownlee is beside himself, and Krista, they can't hardly stand it, <laughs> waiting for their little baby to come. We're going to love again, and we're going to make mistakes again, but with God's help, we can live into being the people that he has called us to be. I think that one of the reasons we still remember David and think of David, and he is still referred to by the Jewish people who know this history better than we do, he is still a man after God's own heart because he still knew in the midst of everything that he did and all the decisions he made, he still knew who was in charge. And when he messed up, he admitted it. And he asked for that forgiveness. And that is a huge lesson for all of us. When we mess up, let's just admit it. Let's be honest with ourselves and the ones that we love. It's like, you know what, I, I didn't make the best decision. It might have been the best decision I could make at that time based on what was going on in my life. And if I had a do-over, I would do it different. But I don't think that's what's important. I think what's more important is that we live lives of honesty and integrity so that our children, even if it's a difficult child, even if it's a difficult time and place, we know that we've done the best that we could for them because heaven knows 
God did the absolute best for each one of us through Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for this day and for the stories that help us to listen and, and look into our own lives. Stories that challenge us and remind us that you're God and we're not. Help us to live into that revelation. Help us to live into that life and that light. And help us to be the people you've called us to be in this time and place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.